So, in last week's episode, I gave my opinion and brief analysis of why I thought the apple might be one of the most powerful fruits on the planet. Now, you may have your own opinions, and if so, leave those in the comment section below. We love to hear your thoughts. But that was last week. This week is the second part of our two-part episode of The Most Powerful Fruits. At the end of that episode, I mentioned that my second option is the tomato. And again, when I say powerful, I'm not just talking about nutritional. As a matter of fact, according to a study done by World Atlas in 2018, tomatoes rank number one in worldwide production. To put things into perspective, the apple is listed all the way at number four. Why is that? Why is the tomato seemingly taking over the world? I'm Chris, and of course, you're watching Faxma. <laughs> So, let's talk history for a bit. While tomatoes originated in the Indies, western regions of Bolivia, Peru, Chile, and Ecuador, and cultivated for the first time around 700 AD by the Aztecs and Incas, they were brought to Europe by explorers returning from South America and have been beloved around the world ever since. China leads in growing tomatoes at almost 57 million tons a year. Used for the most popular dishes in the world, from pasta sauces to the humble ketchup for burgers and fries, it is also an integral ingredient to most salads such as Greek or tomato and mozzarella, as well as undisputed in omelets. So out of all the foods that tomatoes affect, the most popular of all these foods is perhaps the pizza. Naples in the 1700s and early 1800s was a thriving waterfront city. Napoleon's required inexpensive food that could be consumed quickly. Pizza, flatbreads with various toppings eaten for any meal and sold by street vendors or informal restaurants, met this need. Italy unified in 1861, and King Umberto I and Queen Margarita visited Naples in 1889. Legend has it that the traveling pair became bored with their steady diet of French cuisine and asked for an assortment of pizzas from the city's Pizzeria Brandi, the successor to De Petrio's Pizzeria, founded in 1760. The variety the queen enjoyed most was called Pizza Mozzarella a pie topped with a soft white cheese, tomatoes, and green basil. From then on, the story goes that particular topping combination was dubbed Pizza Margarita. Italians introduced tomatoes to pizza to give it that famous flavor that has become a favorite. But here's the interesting thing. In those days, people actually thought tomatoes were poisonous. However, America exported lots of tomatoes to Europe, encouraging people to use them as toppings after seeing they were safe to eat. After that, immigrants in the United Wait States a minute. were... <laughs> Sorry for the interruption, but we have a slight detour to make. Let's go back to something I just said. People thought tomatoes were poisonous. Let's talk about that for a moment. You see, every time a new fruit was introduced to a different society, many odd things happened. In some instances, people would perceive it in high regard and almost attribute mythical status to these fruits, like the apple, for example. In other cases, myths surrounding the notoriety of that particular fruit would emerge, and perhaps none other proves this than the tomato. The arrival of the tomato was received with mixed reactions. Some readily accepted it, while others feared the fruit entirely. In the southern part of Europe, it was readily accepted, but there was a lot of opposition to it on the northern side. One of the reasons that the people of northern Europe were quick to object to it was because it looked like a local poisonous fruit known as the wolf peach. Tomatoes were also relegated to society's lower reaches as rich nobles chose not to eat them after a few attempts. In the 1500s, for example, rich people ate from utensils made from lead. Tomatoes are acidic, and thus the reaction between the utensil's surface would produce lead compounds that leached off the plate and were ingested. The result of constantly consuming lead compounds is lead poisoning. This problem hit rich circles, and thus the tomato became an omen and an ornamental plant grown in small gardens. Poor people who ate from wooden plates did not get affected by this problem at all. It was a welcome addition to their diets. The tomato became, however, widely accepted because of two particular events. One was the mass immigration to America. Italians who migrated to America brought it and incorporated it into their diet. It thus became a staple in American households. 
The other was none other the invention of the pizza. But speaking of which, let's get back to the program. Immigrants, as we just discussed, came to the United States from Naples, replicating their trusty, crusty pizzas in New York and other American cities, including Trenton, New Haven, Boston, Chicago, and St. Louis. The Neapolitans were coming for factory jobs, as did millions of Europeans in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. They weren't seeking to make a culinary statement. But relatively quickly, the flavors and aromas of pizza began to intrigue non-Neapolitans and non-Italians. Although pizza has long winding roots from ancient Greece through Italy to the rest of the world, it is generally most people's delight. Social, economic, and cultural markings are baked into pizza's goodness. Over time, the toppings have changed to accommodate the different cultures of the world. Despite bakers from all over the globe now custom making the pizza, the bottom line remains the same. Almost every good pizza has a crust and tomatoes that holds it all together. One other thing that tomatoes have are healing powers. You see, scientists believe one of the beneficial ingredients in tomatoes is lycopene, which also gives tomatoes their deep red color. Like other antioxidants, lycopene protects by inhibiting the action of free radicals, destructive substances that form in the body because of the wear and tear of aging and other stressors, such as pollution, smoking, and ultraviolet rays. By binding itself onto free radicals, lycopene helps keep them from causing cell damage that could result in cancer and other diseases. Lycopene is also present in other foods, including grapefruit, guava, apricots, and watermelon. Also, tomatoes come in handy due to their cheap nature, and they don't require much skill to cook. Because of this, tomatoes are consumed worldwide more than any other fruit. So, we finally come to the end of our two-part analysis of the most powerful fruits. Let's recap our options. As I said last week, no other fruit pops up so frequently in art, literature, and everyday speech as the apple. But then again, the tomato is the most consumed and probably the most used fruit on the planet. So who wins here? Well, that's where you come in. Let us know in the comment section down below which fruit do you prefer and which is the most powerful to you. But now, I will finally ask, what do you think? <laughs>